Good evening, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and we have some brand new Horus archetype we gotta discuss. I don't know if this is a brand new archetype, or this is like support for like Horus level 7 or whatever, or Horus 13. If you don't know, Horus is a level up deck, just kind of like Silent Swordsman and other archetypes like that. But I could be mistaken, this could be a brand new archetype, kind of like retrains like the uh, Siju cards were. Let's we'll actually read these dudes and see how good they are. So first things first, we have Horus no equally or Amnesty Glory of Horus. Dark Spellcaster, level 8, 3000 attack, 1800 defense. You can only spell someone this card's name once per turn. And you only use the second and third effect of this card once per turn. If you control uh, Veronic Sarcophagus, spell someone this card from your graveyard. You can send two cards from your hand to graveyard, including this card. Add one Siphonic Sarcophagus from your deck to hand, then draw one. So, at first, I thought it is still a minus. It's a kind of a big minus, not going to lie, uh, for the second effect. Because you can send two cards from your hand to grave. Then add the card, and then draw one. So, if your opponent ashes you, you just minus three. And you discard, you send two cards from your hand, including this card. Unless, maybe it's not as bad. Maybe it's two cards, including this card. Is this counting itself as the second card? Or is it literally three cards you're discarding? If, if it's three cards you're discarding, this is ass. If it's not three cards, it's just himself and another card, not so bad. But if this card gets ashed, it's still a really bad minus. So, I don't know. And then it's third effect. If another card you control leaves the field by opponent's card effect while you control this monster send one card from the field to graveyard so that is actually a really solid effect that is really good removal the only issue it does depend on your opponent to do it so most likely they'll try to get rid of this thing before they get rid of anything else if they read your cards but overall that is pretty solid removal so uh before they have to deal with anything they gotta deal with this lady on field there's no way to really special summon her i guess from grave so you guys you reborn her from grave once you get the fields that whatever the sulfonic sarcophagus is i guess it's either a field spell or a continuous spell we'll just have to find out um uh, so far it's interesting i definitely see ash as like a killer because if it's actually discarding itself and two other cards that's a minus three which is really really bad like yes technically you can play archetype that like benefits from discarding cards for example uh branded if you discard like a tragedy or an edge of chain technically you're not losing advantage there because they'll float and grave and add you other cards. So technically, you can also plus really hard off this card, depending on what you discard. But at the same time, it's still a minus, so I don't know. Alright, so next is next. We have Horus no Sukafuka. Or, I, funny enough, the English name is actually harder to pronounce. I'm just going to call this guy the Blessing of Horus. Uh, it's a water beast. Uh, level 8, so I've been paying attention to their levels. They're all level 8 so far. Beast Monsters, it's a water beast. Uh, zero attack, zero defense, so stats are not great. The other one definitely had a 3,000 body, but whatever. Uh, you can special summon this card from your hand. Uh, with one, uh, you can only special, wait, you can only special summon this card with this name once per turn. I can only use the third effect once per turn. So it's first effect, if you control Sarphonic Sarcophagus, special summon this card from your graveyard. So I guess the idea is that you want to get these guys in grave, have the, whatever this Sarphonic Sarcophagus card is, and then just keep summoning them from grave, which is pretty cool. But they're kind of dead in hand if you have a way to get them in graveyard. They are level 8, so I can see this deck being played with trade in, because you can trade them in, thus you get them in grave and you draw 2, which is actually kind of solid. That card's also a minus two because if they negate it, yes, you got these guys in grave, but they technically minus two. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. Uh, its second effect is a continuous event that gains 1200 attack and defense for each horse monster you control. So he gets pretty big if you control multiple. All right, so let's go over the last effect. So its third and final effect is if other cards you control leave the field by your opponent's card effect while you control this monster, you can draw cards equal to the number of monsters with different names in your main monster zone. So that's actually kind of interesting because the other one also got benefits if another card left the field. So it's kind of a lose-lose situation. 
they're either drawing like three or four cards or they're like having removal in the form of like the send one card from field grave which is a pretty insane effect so overall i feel like max removal is really bad for uh, bad for them but like individual removal is actually not that bad because they all benefit when you remove them so overall this card's actually kind of solid we'll just have to see how the rest of these cards go it looks like there's two more main deck monsters and then we have a continuous spell which i guess is the uh the sarcophagus card and then we also have a trap card so let's keep reading so the next monster is harpy vanguard of horus uh all these guys are level eight i've been noticing so this guy is the wing beast uh level eight monster 2400 attack 1600 defense so i noticed how none of these have to deal with level ups so i guess it really is just a brand new archetype uh if you, you can only get special summon this card and its first name and its and second effect is named once per turn if you control symphonic sarcophagus special summon this card from a graveyard so it's not a bad deal to discard this guy and then you can target two cards that are banished or engraved either add those to your owner's hand or shuffle back at the deck so that's not a bad effect so basically if another card leaves the field while this guy's on field you just either shuffle your grave wait target two cards that are banished or in the graveyard either add them to the owner's hand or shuffle them back at the deck so i guess it's either player's graveyard that's actually kind of solid so this card basically just shuffles your opponent's graveyard back into the deck which is actually kind of solid so that's actually really really good re uh, good removal overall this card is actually probably one of the better ones then all three aren't bad but they just don't do anything on themselves they're just level eights like yeah they're cool free level eight material um the sad part is you only special summon them once per turn so an idea that you get is like as long as you have a continuous spell you can keep summoning them that was the idea but since you only summon them once per turn by name that isn't really a possibility another issue is that if the continuous spell leaves you just can't summon any of them which sucks all right let's see the last monster in the spell and trap saved this archetype because so far this archetype is very mid it's hard to judge an archetype without reading all the cards so let's go over the final main deck monster it looks like it's another level eight earth this is aegis horus um so this is actually horus himself 2500 slash 2000 defense level eight i'm actually kind of surprised that he's not the biggest monster because glory of horus is actually stronger but the horus himself is actually a weaker monster unless there's some like attack boost effect but you can only special on this guy once per turn you can only use the second effect of this card once per turn i control the sarphonic sarcophagus but summon this card from graveyard so they all say that if other cards you control lead the field by your opponent's card effect while you control a monster you activate this effect this turn your opponent monsters can't target horus monsters on the field for attacks also your opponent can't target them with card effects so i guess they, they all have really really cool synergy so i don't really have a good game plan because they are beat sticks i guess because blessing of horus is going to be big because let's say you have all four out uh blessing is going to gain 1200 attack for each one so technically blessing of horus is actually the biggest monster because let's say you have all f one two three four of them out he's going to gain 1200 for each horse you control does that i'm assuming it includes himself thus uh basically he's going to be 12 times four that's gonna be a 4800 monster which is kind of insane i mean they all have like really good effects when they get leave the field all right so now we have finished going over the main deck monsters let's actually go over the uh spells and traps real quick so we have the continuous spell that we've been hearing so much about spheronic uh, sarcophagus now i'm not gonna lie to you this card needs to be insane in order for this deck to be playable because this if this card is like can be cosmic or mst really easily then this deck kind of doesn't work because basically the only way to summon out the big dudes is either pendulum summon them tribute summon them or use their actual effects to summon them so as long as your opponent can keep sarcophagus off the field they literally can't play the game which was really bad so let's read this card and see if it's actually solid and see how we go from here so uh, you can only use the second effect of this card and its name once per turn first effect horrors monsters control can't be destroyed by card effects unless you target them okay so that already fixes one of the biggest issues with them 
And the big issue that I was seeing was, okay, mass destruction kind of deals with them because, as I say, what happens if you just dark hole them? Well, then they all left at the same time, thus they lose. But this card saying, no, you have to get rid of them individually, thus that actually kind of sucks because once one of them leaves, they all trigger. So you actually get a lot of pluses off that effect. So that's actually a really, really solid continuous effect on this card. Again, no, this card doesn't have no any protection. Let's keep reading. And the second effect is you can send one card from your hand to graveyard, send one of horse monster from your deck to grave. So that's actually really good because it's basically a free spell summon of whatever horse you want from deck because you can just send it and then immediately after special summon. Uh, what I've noticed is that None of them are bestial targets. One's Earth, Wind, Water, and I guess I guess the uh, Glory of Horus is Dark, so I guess that's the only bestial one. But the other ones actually can be bestialed, which is actually kind of nice. Now, don't get me wrong, Glory probably has one of the stronger effects when it leaves the field, or when other cards leave the field, because it is removal. But at the same time, I don't know. And it's also the one you kind of want the... It's probably the best one, honestly, Glory. Because you can also just add sarcophagus from deck. And also draw you a card. I don't know. That, that's kind of debatable. So it kind of sucks that the best one is bestialable. But let's keep going. Uh, third and final effect is once a turn at the start of the Damon step. If a Horus monster battles an opponent's monster. Send that opponent's monster to graveyard. So that's another really solid effect. But I don't think it saves the archetype. So, basically what it does is that, hey, basically, this one spell kind of fixes the biggest issue of the main deck dudes, which was, hey, if they leave the field by card effects, like, on, like, a continuous effect, like, let's say, like, a mass destruction effect, you don't get any of your pluses, so they all left at the same time. But the other issue I saw was just battle, because it says that they leave the field by your opponent's card effect, so battling them is just easy enough. But luckily, this card says, hey, at least for one battle, then monster instantly gets blown up. So, which is pretty solid. Now, don't get me wrong, this card could be negated and be destroyed before battle, so it ain't that great. But it does fix one of the other issues with the deck. Uh, still, the biggest issue, though, is if this card's not on field, you can't summon your dudes. So, this deck hard loses the spell and trap removal or just spell and trap negation in general. Not to mention, you can open a whole hand of these guys. And if they negate the uh, the uh, blessing, or not blessing, the glory, you're kind of out of luck. Like, you can't summon these dudes from grave or hand if they if you can just keep them off the uh, the field spell. So I can definitely see this deck being splashed. Like, they'd be in, like, a Blue Eyes or maybe, like, a Grand Maju. Like, a rank H strategy. And uh, maybe Dark Worlds, but Dark Worlds are already kind of pricky. So I don't know how adding these guys would help. Uh, I would say... Another archetype that could be splashed is like Auto Attic because they're eights as well, but they're light and dark. These guys aren't really light and dark. So not to mention they don't really have other synergies with them besides graveyard summoning. So there's definitely this potential. I just you gotta find the best build to splash this deck with. Because I definitely think this deck by itself is not enough. There's just nothing this deck does. It has no extra deck monsters, it has it has like no real game plan. Like, besides the summoning a whole bunch, you're, like, hoping that's enough. But besides, like, I, I would say if you play Skill Drain, it's definitely just big beat sticks. But Skill Drain is even not good to this deck because the biggest monster you have is 3,000 attack. Because this guy's zero attack on a field because he gains attack by his effects. So Skill Drain doesn't work. I don't know. This deck's definitely very weird. It definitely needs a second wave of support. Let's see if the trap card salvages it. So the last card is Canopopic Protection. It's a continuous trap. You can only use the second effect of this card once per turn. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, spell some one horse from your hand, deck, or graveyard, and you do, uh, you can spell some monsters with the same original name of this effect of Canopotecta. If this card is set from a hand, field, or graveyard, you can set it, but banish it when it leaves the field. So, honestly, that's kind of the effect that the, uh, sarcophagus needed it needed like a way to protect itself the fact that uh, this card can reset itself is actually kind of nice and the fact that once a turn you just summon one from deck is also really nice which is really really cool you can just spell summon one horse monster from hand or graveyard uh so 
The idea is that you can just dump one and it's found someone from Grave, which is pretty cool. It's like a reborn every turn. I don't know. I, I think it's really solid. Like, it, the first wave is solid. But on its own, it's not good enough. Like, there's too many, like, weaknesses to the deck. Literally, MST solos the entire archetype. If you can keep Pharaonic Sarcophagus off field, you literally can't summon a single monster in the entire archetype without Pendulum summoning. So, honestly, this is definitely a D-tier archetype until we get some new support or more cards are revealed. But uh, I hope you all enjoy. Tell me in the comments how you think about it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>